All right, let's welcome in the singer and bass player from a great, great band who uh, are Hi. still putting out amazing albums. Yes, uh, brand new album, Punching the Sky, out now. It's Joey and John from Armored Sane. What's up, fellas? Hi, Don. Hello. And I think we're. Hi. I think we have uh, Slagle hopping on at some point. Oh, cool. Far out. But we're going to make this a whole Metal Blade party the last half of the show. So, uh, but good to have you. It's, this is good to have. See, I, I got to have guys who are either sober or have kids <laughs> to, to call in early from the West Coast. So you, <laughs> you guys kind of fit well, that mold more or less. We're not sober, but we definitely have kids. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, and you got my Roman Coke drink here. Drink it already. Uh, you dr drink it already. My God. Roman Coke, baby. No, no, that's come on. No, it's iced coffee. There you go. <laughs> it's time to wake up. It's time to promote this album. And man, I've been just seeing tons of press on it. Uh, you know, all good reviews, all good comments, uh, as I would expect. Uh, my first question: So, punching the sky is that some kind of euphemism for masturbating? You know, because like you have like you know hitchhiking to the moon and stuff like that. What what's the origins of that name? Wow, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one yet, but uh, I will use that in future interviews. Yeah, that's pretty good. I will. Yeah, yeah. I was. I, um, yeah, I was. Sorry, I was late. I was punching the sky. I was punching the sky. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna use that. Um, that's pretty awesome. Well, somebody told me in an interview the other day that it could be a reference to wanting to punch out God, and I was like, wow, I haven't heard that one either. That was a new one, and and I, I kind of liked it as well. But uh, that's a I little too esoteric of, for me. Huh? <laughs> um, I think it's a little bit more about just kind of the metaphor. I, I'm a big sports fan. Um, and so I like to kind of I like to I like that victorious moment that people have when they win a game like the Dodgers were doing last night after they won and beat Tampa in the first game of the World Series. Yep. And um, I think that, you know, it's a it's a powerful statement of of like raising your fist and 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 kind of punching through any boundaries which is important too because um you know that's kind of where our mind is when when we're making records we've done it the last couple of records and we continue to do it where we we're not really too concerned about any kind of limitations we we feel like past the sky is the limit so it worked out it worked out well for us so and, and so when, when you guys you know sat down you heard the final mix of the album you're sitting there with bill matoyer who uh produced the album who's done a, a ton of metal blade uh records is that was that the reaction uh was like were you punching the sky when you heard heard the final uh product go for it joe um sh sure i mean we were as he was masturbating <laughs> yeah <laughs> Of course, with headphones. Well, you got two hands. <laughs> you got uh, two you know, hands. Yeah, we were, you know, I mean, the process is, uh, you know, we're all very close to the process the whole way through. So, you know, um, by the time we got to the mixing stage, uh, it was mixed by Jay Rustin. Um, yep, we, okay. were, we had a pretty good idea about what it was going to end up sounding like. But, you know, once you get to that point at the end of the process, you're you know that the end is near. You've been putting a lot of hard work into it for a long time, which we did. And uh, yeah, you get that feeling of like, you know, we we're, we're you know, we're doing it. You know, we did it. So it's, it's uh, you do have that feeling at the end of the process for sure. Joey, Joey, you know, produced. He actually produced the record really, and he did, <laughs> he got a lot of amazing sounds uh, with the help of people like Bill and Will that with the help of people like John. Josh Newell, who did the drum editing and stuff, but um, it was such a good basic tracks of all the of all the instruments and stuff. So by the time we handed it off to Jay, who just elevates it to another level, uh, you know, we were pretty confident it was going to sound pretty awesome. So we were we were happy. 
as and guys just let me know when when brian's on or just just pop him in um so for, after all these years after all the years of playing not only an armored saint but obviously john you playing with anthrax and joey you know you you're still currently now in in fate's warning uh and and motor sister um is it still that thing by the time you get the album done you know you've played it so many times you've heard it so many times you've heard every version of it when you get to the end is there still that kind of a little bit of doubt like ah, d d is it is it great is it is it is that judgment still kind of cloudy still after all these years well, I, I'll just say that um, I haven't listened to it a lot lately, and the main reason was to not burn out on it. So yeah. well, when you're listening to mixes, I mean, Joey obviously is much closer because he was producing it, so he had to listen to it a lot and, and kind of really scrutinize it. But I, I've taken a break from it mainly because I just don't want to burn out on it. I mean, it comes out, it's not even out yet. So the last thing you want is, like, oh, that record, yeah, that's all that. I'm done with it. It's not even out yet, but I'm, I'm over it. You know, it's just because we do love it, but what when you're preparing to like to a tour you're learning new songs and stuff which we did for the live stream um which was our one and only awesome date in 2020 but um in any case i think um you do need to step away a little bit so you don't burn out and i always say that personally speaking you have a lot more um i always tell people ask me in about a year and i'll give you a better <laughs> assessment of what i really think of it because yeah. right now i think it's you know it's better than the wall so <laughs> great yeah. and as you should and just so you guys know you know at the time that we're taping this um the, the album will be out so we could speak oh, okay, okay, as okay. if it's out um because I, unfortunately it's out now. Sorry. Go get it. it's, it is out now go, go get, get it. it go pick up the new uh cassette tape from armored saint called punching the sky <laughs> it's not about masturbating but it's just as good um and that's cool you guys you know uh, and and i had a uh, lejean uh from seven dust on a few weeks ago they only did the one show of 2020 which was a live stream talk about the one that you guys did at the whiskey a go go in la and uh what were your feelings on that I, you know obviously no no live crowd there well it was it was fun in the end you know i think in the beginning and john will probably agree with me that the the idea at first seemed really alien to us you know uh playing a gig in front of nobody was not really high on our list to do. But once we realized that, you know, <laughs> like it's either that or nothing. So we kind of had to change our mindset and say, you know what, let's just go out there and rock out and have fun. Like we always do. And which we did. And it ended up being great. We had an awesome time on stage uh, playing the new songs were great. We played four new songs and from the record, how did they go it's over out now? <laughs> And uh, Did they yeah, go? so it they was going over it ended right? being a blast. It was a good time. And then I and I saw a review of the show, and it was funny. They said, you know, John, you did a lot. John did a lot of talking to the, you know, the crowd. Um, you know, as as the front man, how was that for you to, to to talk to a virtual crowd? Well, I try to, you know, I kind of have this this banter where I just try to communicate with people on a personal level. I've always kind of approached things that way. So. Um, you know, I, I think it was it was fun. And it was interesting to do that. It you know, it's a trip because we have we've done plenty of shows where where no one was there in our career. So <laughs> we we're like we we're like we're, we're we're okay with with not doing that in in our career at this point. Let's try to have some people there. But of course, some people were not there. But um, yeah, it was it was still a good time. It was still fun and and. Um, you know, we, it was kind of like a glorified video, if you will. You know, we have these cameras in front of us. Joey, Joey's wife, Tracy, was there, and my wife, Tori, was there. And, and that was it. You know, uh, I was really surprised that Gonzo and Phil didn't bring any people. I thought for sure they would, and they didn't, which was surprising. Um, but, you know, in the end, I think, um, you know, we had a good time. We were, we, like Joey said, we were just trying to just have fun like we normally do at any gig. Yeah, have you guys been doing any of those, um, like the quarantine jams or any of that stuff? I know I've been on a few, um, like uh, live chats with with John. But have you guys done any jams, Joey? We we did uh, well. Well, we did one ourselves. We did a, a, a version of an isolation uh, song from okay, right, Raising yep. Fear record. That was early on, yeah. Yeah, we did that pretty early on. When did we do that? June or something? It was pretty early, May or June. Yeah, might have been um, sooner, actually. Yeah. Um, 
But, um, and I've done a couple of things with Motor Sister as well, actually. Yeah. Um, John did one with Charlie, uh, right? Which one yep. did you do with, Char- with Charlie Benante? Yeah, I just did a song with him. It was actually just a portion of a, of a song from the Sound of White Noise record, um, Package Rebellion. Oh, that's right. Was, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was fun. It was really spontaneous, and and um, I, we did like a, maybe the first couple minutes of the song. So that was cool. It was just him on guitar, me and vocals. And then, like Joey said, he did the Motor Sister one from the whiskey. He, he had experienced that, so he had a, some good words of wisdom for us. Oh yeah, that was that was a that was a live stream. Yeah, I mean I've done a few of the the home things too, where you're just playing and you're you know you film yourself playing a song. I mean you know look these things are like they're <laughs> it's like the new norm now at this point you know for, for yeah a, for now it's, it's for now you know it's all you have right now so it's kind of like you know it's actually fun. I mean because after a while we we all got pent up and wanted to get out and do something you know and you since you can't do this is this is again a creative way of getting together with people that you like to work with you know this is which is what you have to do yeah i would like to do one of those drive-ins that would be fun because we had a lot of good memories from growing up in the drive-in going and you know making out with chicks and (laughs) you know getting in the back of the you know having a couple guys in the trunk so you wouldn't have to pay for the price (laughs) And, you know, I mean, I mean, me, Joey and Dave have like one of the greatest memories, Dave Pritchard, of watching the thing at the drive-in. That was just like, you know, I always remember that. So like, if we could do a drive-in, I would be really into that. That sounds fun. Okay. Yeah. That's what, they, you know, they've, they've actually had some comedy uh, drive-in shows, um, you know, when they first started to open up for comics, which is a, it's a very strange thing. I mean, you know, Florida. Yeah. You know, Florentine did one of those. I went to one at I went to the one at um, the Magic Castle. It was a comedy night. Me and my wife, and we sat there, and it was it was weird. I felt compassion and empathy for the comedians because you know they're they're everyone's in their car, so you have no like banter. But yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's I I didn't know. What'd you go? Was it the Burt Kreischer one? Um, I don't remember who put it on, but it was at the Magic Castle here in L.A. But it was a comedy night, so it wasn't magic. And it was fun. We had a good time. Did you go, Joey? No, I haven't been. Uh, I've, a friend of ours, uh, Stephanie, goes all the time. Stephanie Cabral. She's yeah, been to a photographer, couple. She says, yeah. she says it's really cool. It's, well, Have you done it, one, Don? Have you done one of those? <laughs> well, Florentine did one down in Atlantic City. And I said, okay, so how'd it go? He goes, well, I go down there. I'm standing on the back of a pickup truck. I'm telling jokes. And if they like it, they beep. And I go, well, what if they don't beep? He's like, he goes, yeah, one of my jokes, like just one car beeped, you know, but, <laughs> and then like, what, if, like, what if you tell a joke and like, you know, there's a truck going down the street and they just blow their horn. You think that's for you. And like, I don't, it just sounds weird, you know? Um, and you can't really do crowd work. You can't, you know, you're like, I'll look at what, look at the guy in the hot in the civic over there. Like it's right. <laughs> What'd you do? Borrow that from your little sister? Yeah, but, <laughs> right. Right. But, right. Get some new, get some new heckling uh, coming back. That's great. That good. Yeah, but after he told me what a what a horror sh- show it was, of course, like like a true comedian, I asked him. I go, okay, so who books that? <laughs> of course, you're not going to turn down a gig. Um, we're, we're lucky comics because uh, we work alone, and um, so we've been we've been working the last couple of months uh, here on the on the East Coast, whether it be outdoor shows or uh, we've been doing them indoor again. Um, but I know you know you guys are LA man, still still pretty much locked down out there, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, only things, only outdoor stuff. You can't. You can't do anything inside yet, I don't think. Nothing at all. From, huh? what I, from what I gather, everything is still happening in Florida. Big 60,000 uh, seat stadiums. You know, band, <laughs> like our agent goes, I could book you a tour of Florida. It's fine. And we're like, okay. Well, we didn't say okay, but we were laughing, going, you know, it's like they don't, they just don't even care. They just are just living life as normal, which maybe there's, you know, some accolades to that. I, you know, it could be dangerous, of course, but, uh, kind of funny yeah it's it's it is tough guys you know because you know depending on what state you live in uh, you you know you just know what what the rules are where you live and then you think that's the way it is everywhere else you know and and the other problem is 
financial, right? Because I'm a comic. I just do things by myself. I'm not splitting the money up five or six ways, you know, crew members and all that. Um, so, I, you know, right now I can afford to work for a quarter of the money, right? The capacity is 25%. For, but for you guys to get on a bus and, and even even if you want to take the chance, uh, it, it's, it just doesn't pan out. You, you, you know, you're going to lose money. That's true. Uh, that's very true. And it, you know, unfortunately, the the long term outlook doesn't look any better because it's like, well, how long is this really going to go on? And how long is it going to take before what, what you're just saying about the, the full capacity to come back 100 percent? You know, I, I kind of feel like it's going to be a gradual thing. Yeah. But so it's like, well, how long is it going to take before it gets to be back to 100 percent? Because up until that point, you're right. It's going to be really difficult for bands, especially at our at our level, to go do anything at, at a fifty percent capacity, fifty percent guarantee, fifty percent. Everybody gets paid fifty percent, including crew. Yeah. I mean, who can afford to do that? It's it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, sure. it, it, no, absolutely, and um, so, but and so now, when you are out on tour, when you're on the tour bus together, you and all the guys, um, let, let's let's you know, let's be honest here, on the tour uh -oh. bus, who has the worst gas on the tour bus? <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. This is just. I'm. This is just speculation. I'm going Jeff Duncan. Wow. <laughs> Well, Jeff, I'll say this about Jeff. I'm not sure exactly about his gas, but as far as snoring goes, he definitely okay. is the winner. He, he is yes. the winner. That yeah. dude is like, he, and he, he's one of those guys that not only does he snore really loud, but he also like falls asleep within seconds. So like he's the first guy to fall asleep and you're just laying there going, <laughs> I'm trying to fall asleep. And this guy, sound, I mean, he really sounds like a bear. Like, you know, so and we had a, we also had another guy, uh, Joey Stumpo, who was on a tour with oh, us, yeah, and yeah. he was pretty, he was pretty loud himself. So, you know, you try to separate those guys, but, um, you know, as far as gas, I mean, probably everybody's doing a little bit of farting in their own bunks, but, you know, <laughs> I'm, I mean, there's nobody you have to know, Febreze on a daily basis, John. What's that? You know, there's nobody you have to like, when you walk by, you, would you bring the Febreze with you? I, I've never, I've never really, I mean, I've, I'm sure I've smelt it, you know, you, in the morning you get a combination of like gas, bad breath, um, maybe somebody's leftover food they left in their bunk, Yeah. you know, buses are, it's, you know, it has this kind of, it has this great, like, amazing kind of mystery of like, oh, the tour bus, but really when it comes down to it, it it's pretty gross when you have like 11, 12 guys in there with stinky socks and, you know, uh, underwear and you know I, I mean it's you you got to try to keep it clean and it really has to be everybody's um, ambition to try to really keep it clean and 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 some don't let's face it, it it's a traveling urinal man I mean there's 12 <laughs> people pissing in the same pot and it's yeah. like after a couple of days of that I don't care how much you're cleaning that toilet it's like you're in it you're in one of those porta potties yeah but but now ah, you're ah. missing it right now though aren't you just thinking about it yeah. I can't wait. Well, especially <laughs> European buses. European buses toilets are the worst. Those things reek, reek. Wow. How about truck? How about drivers are, are smell good. How about truck What's stops? That? Which which are the what are the best truck stops? What do you, what are your guys' favorites? Is it Loves? Is it Flying J? <laughs> uh, I like a good T and A. Oh, I mean uh, T A, not T N A. <laughs> wow, the flying jays are good. Where's right? my wife? They're, they're always they're always good for your you. Your wife you painting go. another nude photo of you, a uh, painting of you for the wall. Yeah, you see that one right there. Is that the the, the naked Joey back there? I can't. I can't I actually see. have I have boxer shorts on. It's not. I'm not naked. But, but there is a nude is Joey in your house because I've been there. Look, that's weird, huh? Yeah. There's, some, a few some, new weird, there's some weird submission stuff going on in there. I got to say, was, I was very impressed, actually. Um, not just <laughs> by not just by your wife's painting skills, but by uh, what I saw in the in the painting. And uh, we should give a shout out to to Tracy, who's uh, now the president, I believe, of Metal Blade Records. And yeah. uh, obviously, she's doing all the work because uh, Brian Slagle 
is apparently uh, sleeping in right now and not jumping uh-huh. on the chat with us. Um, <laughs> one of the things I wanted to, to I know, right? We get, you know, he's up there in Vegas. He's a big hot shot. Now he owns half the town. You know, he can't get up for a little show like this, but, um, <laughs> You know, Brian and I got to do something really cool. Um, we got to spend about two hours on the phone doing a podcast with Scott Gorham from Thin Lizzy, who's, one, you know, both of our um, musical awesome. he- heroes. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you guys. It, I it, listened to some of that. It was cool. Yeah, I mean, it was great to just go through the whole Thin Lizzy catalog with, you know, the guy who made all those records. And, and you know, I've been on the road with Scott. I've gotten to know him. He's a, he's just an amazing dude. You know, Calif- cool. Mr. California Cool, the Glendale gu- gunslinger. But if you guys had two hours um, to do a podcast and, and you could ask, you, you know, your musical idol anything you wanted for the next two hours, who would it be? Wow. Uh, no pressure. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'd want to talk to Geezer Butler. Mm. Geezer, I'm a huge, huge Geezer fan. He was one of my first, like when I first started learning how to play bass. He was the one of the first guys I gravitated towards, and uh, you know, obviously a huge Sabbath fan as the rest of the world and. Uh, but I think maybe his point of view. I'd like to talk to him because he, you know, was a lot of the wrote a lot of the lyrics for the band and one of the chief songwriters with Tony. And I mean, I mean, just the fact that they what they built, you know, in this genre is just mammoth, you know. Yeah, I don't think he um, could go wrong with Geezer, man. You know. Yeah. I mean, I would I've just never met him. I've never really met him. Oh wow! I, from what I gather, he's he's a really humble, soft-spoken guy. He's you know, so I, I think that would be cool. Talk to Geezer. Yeah, I would just like to know how he became, how he could be from the Midlands of England and and been a vegan for the last forty five years. That's <laughs> that, wow. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> totally. Like how did? Like I, would, I thought about that because uh, Tony. I read Tony's book, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, it, there's some stories. There's some uh, topics he talks about Geezer a lot in the in the book, and he mentions that. And I'm thinking like. How how did he deal with like in the early part of their career when they were like in vans and stuff driving around to gig to gig when they were first slugging it out and he was a vegan then yeah like what the hell was he eating <laughs> across Europe yeah in the early seventies like yeah. imagine that there was no Whole Foods there was no Trader Joe's you know no like what what was he doing he, he ate paint crazy. chips off the wall in the dressing rooms. <laughs> Yeah, he was not stoked on the Flying Jays in America. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I read I, I read Rob Halford's book, and he was very stoked <laughs> for for the uh, truck stops uh, over the years. If you haven't read it, a lot of uh, oh, I want to read that book. A, a lot it's, of it, a lot of great. adventures and truck stops for for the metal wow. god. Believe it or not, how about you, John? A- any heroes that you could spend a couple hours on the phone with, and then hang up and go, okay, that was one of the most awesome things ever. Well, we just did the tour with UFO last year. We played a handful of shows uh, opening for them, and um, we were always giant UFO fans back in the day. They had a big influence on us musically, all of them, and in particular Phil Mogg for me as a singer, and it was fun to watch him every night. And, um, you know, he, he likes to throw back a few, and yes. um, it would be fun to just kind of <laughs> shoot, the, shoot the breeze about... Um, you know, a lot of the various songs that inspired us through the years and talked to him about, about singing and his vocals and his ideas for, for uh, lyrics and a lot of the songs. So I'd love to talk to Phil because we really didn't get a chance to do that too much. You know, he wasn't around a lot. He would come in for the gig and um, he was always super friendly, but we just never really hung out too much. But um, I would love to do that. Yeah, and they they just did their last go around. Um, so we, you know, uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, at some point we'll we'll celebrate Phil and UFO with a, with a big podcast. You guys all know Bob Nalbandian. He's the the king of, of the king of all those things. He's done like 570 documentaries <laughs> on metal. I think just this week. Um, <laughs> But you guys have a you guys have a down another uh, we and we, again let's re, let's remind people that um, that Armored Saint has a brand new album out called Punching the Sky. It is out now, uh, but they also have Woo! now. I don't know if this is out now, but there's a companion piece uh, to it. Speaking of documentaries, which is Armored Saint the movie. 
<laughs> What's up with that? Right with it, is right that like it. Kiss Meets the Phantom in the Park? What is that? Oh, no. <laughs> if that only. Would cool. <laughs> that would be amazing. Is it, is it a doc? Yeah, it's uh, a friend of ours uh, came to us with this idea a couple years ago. He's been a longtime friend of ours, and he's a filmmaker, he's a, a, a teacher at a film school in, in the U.K., his name is Russell Charrington, and he came up, came to us with this idea of, of making a documentary about the band, and uh, we said, "Sure, you know, go for it." So this is this is really his story. It's not not something that we're directly involved with. That we're not making it ourselves per se, but we're involved with, to the extent of you know we've done interviews with him, we've given him lots of media videos, old videos, old footage, flyers, photos, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, so as far as I know, um, the movie is still being edited, um, and I don't think it's finished yet, but I believe that he's pretty close. Um, I think he's trying to get it finished and done by the spring of next year, just in time for COVID to open up. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's that's really, as far as we know, there's a trailer that's out there now. I think you can see it on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, let's, 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 let's roll that for just a, a few seconds, let people take a, a quick look all at right. that so we can uh, get a little taste of what uh, Armored Saint the movie is all about. I'm keen on how anything worked in the music industry at all. And I'm starting to shoot the guys, and the sun's going down. And all of a sudden I looked at the guys and they had this terrorized look in their face. I'm like, guys, what's wrong? Neil, there's three guys with shotguns walking towards us in our direction. I'm like, just shut up, just keep shooting. You know, I, I've never really been anywhere in my life. So to get on a plane and go to Europe, it's kind of like when, when the Beatles came to America, they came, uh, all their heroes from there. For us, it was the opposite. All our heroes were from Europe. And I was really happy for Armored Saint 2 on that record because it was one of these universal, like every review was amazing, like the, just the buzz on that record from the whole metal community was really great. My main recollection of, of Armored Saint at the time was just that they were different. They were different than all the other bands in, in, in LA and Hollywood. Armored Saint is a rock band. There you go. So you got you got some of the Metallica guys in there. You got that's the only place you'll see Brian Slagle apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's where he is. He's busy making he, movies. He's he, Are you ever gonna are you gonna resurrect? Uh, ever gonna resurrect those old uh, the Armored Saint outfits? Well, that one in particular was only one show. I actually, we rented it from Western Costume here in LA. Oh yeah, where a lot of people provide uh, stuff for movies. I think they still do, and. Um, it was for the one and only classic Perkins Palace show where we like we had just signed to Chris Les and we it was like our big kind of uh, celebration show and it was it was amazing it was like twenty one hundred people there it was packed and um, we wanted to do something special so we had to battle me and a, and a friend of mine who um, uh, my buddy Andy was actually lost his life uh, a while back but he was he decided to be the Black Knight and yeah. I was the you know the good guy who won and then I'd take my helmet off and. Uh, it was a, it was a pretty amazing moment, but uh, the the stuff that we used to wear, we brought it out for one gig. We did the thirty year uh, Metal Blade anniversary where How we brought uh, some of our clothes out for that we used to wear, and we wore it for like one song. And then uh, me and Joey were wearing wigs, like we actually got some wigs that kind of looked like our hair at the time. <laughs> and then um, it was great; it was really fun. Then after the song, like you know, we were like, okay, and then we just like took it off and then people were booing and I'm like, I'm not wearing this wig for the whole show. Man. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's for one song, but it was like, it was a really fun moment. It was really funny. And when, when the curtain opened, it was house of blues people, like their jaws dropped of like, what they couldn't believe it, you know? And it was, it was a cool, like little pay paying tribute to all the fans, especially yeah. the old schoolers. And, um, it was a lot of fun and showed our, our amazing sense of humor that you that you love about us so much. <laughs> no, I, I, <laughs> do, I do, but but for the and for the the fans who've been there since the beginning, like me, um, the, metal fans in general are very nostalgic. So I, I know that they did appreciate it, but but I always want to point out, especially with a band like Saint, um, who have been around thirty plus years, that let's not forget. 
besides punching uh, the sky, which is out now, you know, you're following up a 2015 album, and I, I love to show off my vinyl, Win Hands Down, yeah. which is such a terrific, terrific album, um, and it's got uh, features uh, Vince Edwards from Metal Blade being punched out on the front <laughs> cover, um, which I which I love because he's a very angry man, and uh, he, he he can take a punch, which is good. Um, and so you're following up this album, and then the other one I should mention because I just th- let me tell you what I love about this live record that that has, you know this is tiding us over from uh, when hands down until the new album, Carpe Noctum live album eight songs motherfucker not 72 songs you put it on you rock the fuck out and you're done this is one of my favorite live albums just because of that um so well done on that and always well done thank you yeah always well done live with you guys man that's the other thing is seeing you guys perform live is always such a treat and uh and i hope we can i hope we can see you again when there's actually people in the crowd but um we'll we'll see what happens going down the road here <laughs> yeah us too fingers crossed and, you know we love it we we i mean that one hour on stage one hour and a half on stage whatever it is like it's we just live for that moment you know all the other hours we could do without but that that <laughs> time we're on stage is it's like it's our zone so we love yeah. it and we, we i like a lot of bands we all miss it you know so we can't wait to finally get back to playing. Yeah, and you save a lot of money on therapy that way too, which is good. So, um, <laughs> very good point. Hey, quick, oh. hey, hey Joe, let me before we wrap. Let me just, um, Joey, give a a, a, a quick um, plug for Fate's Warning because you've been now in Fate's Warning for the last bunch of years, and and you guys uh, have a record uh, out or coming out. Um, I got to check the date. Yeah. If it's not out now, it's coming out soon. But new Fate's Warning album. Yeah. Give us a give us the sales pitch on that real quick. Yeah, I think it comes out in November 9th or so, or somewhere around there. So early November, right behind our record. So yep. um, the record's great. Um, Jim and Ray wrote some amazing music. Uh, really, really cool songs. Great choruses. Super melodic stuff. And then there's also some, of course, the Fate's fans, the Prog fans will love the. There's a couple of really long parts and sections, you know, songs that have some crazy proggy things. Um, it was really challenging for me to play. <laughs> um, and uh, it was mixed by Joe Barisi, so the production's killer and the mix is great. Um, so, we're, you know, we're stoked on it. The record should be out now. If it's not, it's coming out tomorrow. Cool, and so so everybody go out and uh, pick up punching, p- pick up punching this guy first, and then yeah. if you have a couple shekels left over, you go over and you get the Fate's Warning as well for the Prague fans because they're two very different bands. But uh, you know, you sh- you guys both share Joey in that band, and then we'll have you come back on and talk about Motor Sister, and maybe just maybe the 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 delicate genius Brian Slagle will join us the next <laughs> time. But for now, uh, that's it, guys. Thanks so much and congrats on all the new music man i'm, I'm you know i i known you guys for years and i i couldn't be happier for you so thanks again thank, thank you don. don thanks for all the support for through all the years bud and thanks for making us laugh all these years you got thank it you. man let's 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 keep each making each other uh rock and laugh for many years to come